Welcome back. In this lesson moving forward, I'm going to demonstrate a concept in ServiceNow platform known as the workflows. Very elaborate, very important. I'm going to highlight the core areas so that you can prepare for the exam and answer some questions. So the workflow, as the name sounds, is basically, for example, let's suppose you want to get an item approved by the manager. So we can automate the entire process by creating a workflow. So instead of sending an email to the manager and the manager returning you an email and there's a lag in between, we can create a very smooth workflow so that it's easier and more efficient and it increases productivity for the entire organization. So in ServiceNow, we can use the workflow editor to create or modify existing workflows. We can also create custom activities and reuse the data for other workflows. We can download certain activity packs, for example, from the ServiceNow store. And these are pre-made packs. We can edit the workflows, define transitions, lots of things that you can do. You can validate workflows, you can publish workflows, and so on. So let's jump right in. Let me, in fact, show you this. So let's go to our filter navigator and just type workflow. And the first thing that comes up under the workflow application, the module is called Workflow Editor. So I'm going to go ahead and click on this. This opens up a new window and brings up the workflow page. On the right side, notice, are all the workflows that are listed. So if I were to, let's say, click on an existing workflow, for instance, how about the approval workflow here? So if I click on this particular workflow, it's going to show me the actual layout of the entire workflow step by step from beginning and all the way to the end as well. So we get an idea of how the workflow works and what it really is. On the right side, notice there's a tab called Packs that I mentioned earlier. So we can get the orchestration packs, for example, or under the ServiceNow packs, we can have the Active Directory, the Azure AD, for example. We can have the Exchange packs. And I can always expand to take a look at each one of these. So each one of these packs allow us to enhance our existing workflows. If I need to create a new workflow, for instance, so I'm going to go back to the Welcome tab here. Once I'm in the Welcome tab, under the Workflows tab on the right side, notice there's a plus sign. And this is where I can actually create my own workflow. So I'm going to go ahead and click on this just so you can actually see how it's done. Once I click on it, notice the Drawing Canvas appears and the New Workflow dialog box also appears and wants me to give the new workflow a name. So let's go ahead and call this test underscore C. I need to link this workflow with the table. So I'm going to go ahead and let's say do a request item. So I can choose the approval definition or the requested item table. You can choose any other tables if you like. So I'm going to go ahead and select this table and click submit. I can also have conditions, right? So I can specify at least one condition to trigger the workflow. So for instance, let's say if I were to request a laptop, right? And I need the manager's approval. Since I'm using the approval definition table for the test C or test laptop, or it could be any name, I can specify the condition to either run the workflow, run if no other workflows matched yet. So two options. So I'm going to go ahead and keep the option called run the workflow. I can add additional conditions or the add or clause, right? Choose a field, operator, and value. So at this point, I'm just going to give it a name and a table and click submit. And what this will do is create the beginning and the end, right? So we will have two options at this point. And everything in between we would need to actually configure based on our own particular requirement. So here notice we have the begin and of course the end. So now if I need to, let's say, 
select the begin. I can always go to the toggle or the workflow actions here. And I can choose to either publish, delete, set, inactive, expand the transitions, validate workflow. Once you're done creating the entire workflow, you can always validate your actual steps. Or I can go back to the properties and it will bring up the same screen again. So once I'm done with this, notice I only have two options, beginning and the end. So now I can always add more options to this from any one of these. So it's easier for me to actually build the workflow. So let's scroll down. Let me see if I can find something, right, just to give you an example. So I'm going to go ahead and, in fact, let me scroll down further, create user. Perfect. So here's create user. So I'm going to drag create user. That's my new activity. And I can specify the workflow instance, right, which is create user. I can specify the host name, username, first name, last name, password, and description. So this is going to actually go ahead and create the user once I run the workflow. So let's say it's Chris Portman here, or I'm going to change the last name here to the next field and give it a password one, two, three, four, five, and then test username is CP, for example, and so on. Just just demoing right now, so you actually get an idea of the actual concept of creating the workflow. So let's go ahead and click submit, and this will add the actual create user to the workflow canvas. Now I can drag it and drop it, or notice in this instance, it gives me a little yellow dot that turns blue once I hover over it, right? This is where I can connect to each one of these other workflow items, right? So for example, if I were to drag this and connect to the beginning, it should be the other way around, right? So I need to drag the beginning to the workflow user, right? So once I begin the workflow, and then the next step would be to actually create a user. So at this point, notice all I've done so far is when I initiate this workflow, this is going to first start the workflow. And the very first thing it's going to do is create the user. And right after the user is created, I'm going to drag another arrow and end the workflow. Pretty neat. So here, a simple workflow that I can create and work with, right? So it's going to begin, create the user, and then end. If there's some issues while creating the user, for instance, it's going to end the workflow as well. So simple logic as we move forward. Take a look at this. Also, enhance your understanding and read more about it because in the exam, there's going to be some textual concepts as well. The reason why I'm demonstrating is that so you get a flavor, an idea of what the workflow does. But obviously, there are several terms, right, that you need to also memorize for the exam. And that's important as well. So I hope this helps. Practice. And let's move to the next lesson.